Well, an official good morning to you all this morning. Thank you for joining us for our virtual Iowa Quiltscape. This is Tuesday, March 23rd. And our topic today is Iowa Quilt Shops, the abundance and awesomeness of Iowa Quilt Shops. And if you've been a regular um, visitor for our virtual Iowa Quiltscape, you know that some weeks our topic is Iowa themed and some weeks it is exhibit themed. And although we just installed a brand new exhibit, which opens today, um, today we're not really talking about that exhibit. We will be next week though. Um, but I am gonna give you a quick little preview. I've just taken a few photos this morning. And so I'm gonna do a screen share and just give you a quick little view through um, the exhibit. Um, our exhibit now is called A Quilted Garden and it is floral quilts from the collection of the New England Quilt Museum. And the New England Quilt Museum is located in Lowell, Massachusetts. And their curator, Pam Weeks, um, has served as our guest curator for this exhibit. And so there are both historical and contemporary quilts, all of a floral nature. Now the floral could either come in the applique, like some of the ones you see here, it could come in the fabric or it could come in the quilting. Um, it comes in several ways. This one on the right, in fact, is stenciled. Um, so it's basically a whole cloth quilt with stencil to look like applique. The one towards the right of this picture is called um, wind blown tulips and it is kind of the centerpiece. It's um, hanging on what's called the curtain wall. So it's a place of prominence. I don't know how I got muted. Oftentimes we get the question of how do we come about these exhibits? Um, and one way is through conversations that we have with people who are connected to quilts. Um, it was a conversation with Pam Weeks where we said, hey, would you ever like to serve as a curator for us sometime? To which she said, sure, that sounds like fun. The program committee had been wanting to do an exhibit of floral quilts. And so we posed that to Pam and she thought it sounded like a great exhibit that she could pull together from the New England Quilt Museum. And so that's how that happened. And that first conversation took place probably three years ago. So those, um, our exhibit planning happens sometimes well in advance of what you actually see here in the gallery. This one on the right is called Blue Hawaiian. It's a Hawaiian style cutwork applique. It's just totally awesome, one of my favorites. All right, so I'm gonna back us out of the gallery after that little preview. I did put all of those um, pictures on our Facebook page this morning. So if you um, follow our Facebook page, you can find those there. If you don't, um, find us there on Facebook. We're just at Iowa Quilt Museum. And if you're not familiar with the Iowa Quilt Museum, we are We are located in Winterset, Iowa, which is just southwest of Des Moines a bit. Um, and we're right on the town square and we're pocketed in between two fantastic quilt shops, Ben Franklin and PeaceWorks Quilt Shop. And two of those folks are, well, three of those folks are our guests today. So let me go ahead and introduce some of our guests and I'm gonna spotlight them as I introduce them. So Tony Jacobson, is the manager of PeaceWorks Quilt Shop and a fine quilter, um, graphic artist, and serves on the board here at the Iowa Quilt Museum. His yeah. partner in crime, so to speak, is Joyce Franklin. Um, she is the owner of PeaceWorks Quilt Shop. Um, prior to that, owned a quilt shop in Creston, Iowa and was instrumental in the beginning, the, the startup of what's called the Iowa, All Iowa Shop Hop. And she's gonna tell us some about that as well. Um, Judy Trask is the 
uh, co-owner of the Ben Franklin store, which is our neighbor to the right or neighbor to the, the east, I should say, um, here in Winterset. And there is a very fine quilting section as part of the Ben Franklin, in addition to the rest of the store, which is also fabulous. My children and I love to go spend time at the Ben Franklin store. We always find something we just have to have. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Heidi Kaisend is the owner of Hen and Chicks Studio in Conrad, Iowa, and also publisher of publisher, editor, maybe both, <laughs> of American Quilt Retailer Magazine. So Heidi's going to talk to us about several things quilt related in Iowa. And Colleen Herlocker is the director of the All Iowa Shop Hop. And so we're going to talk about that topic as well a little bit later. So now that you can see everybody and you know who our guests are today, um, I'm gonna let everybody give themselves a little bit of an introduction. Um, tell us who they are, where they're located um, and what they do in relationship to quilting in Iowa. And um, let's go in reverse, shall we? So Colleen, why don't you start and tell us a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do with quilting in Iowa. Well, uh, my name is Colleen and I am located in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and I manage the All Iowa Shop Hop, the shop hop that Joyce started long ago, 10 years. We're actually in our 10th year anniversary, and we have one of the largest shop hops in the United States in that we, it, it covers the entire state, and uh, beginning in 2020, it lasts for two months. So it's a great opportunity for people from all over the United States to come to Iowa and experience so many different shop uh, quilt stores and sewing stores. And we have typically anywhere from 85 to 100 stores on the shop hop. So it's a great way to really get exposed to stores who have all kinds of different specialties and backgrounds and um, you know, they all, they all have their own unique personality and every store is different and it's just great to be able to go around and experience quilting in um, such an array, if you will. And the goal, if you're like a, a dyed in the wool shop hopper, the goal is to see if you can make it to every single shop in the hop in the period of time, right? And it, yeah. used to be, it was just the month of June. Um, right year things changed a little bit of course for everybody so now you're saying it will continue to be June and July going mm -hmm. forward yeah so last year because um, Iowa had just opened up in May we we made a lot of accommodations so that both our stores their employees and especially our shop hoppers felt safe and comfortable going out in person <clears throat> to an in-person shop hop and one of the things that we did was we extended the time frame. Uh, so now it starts June 1st and it goes through July 31st. I call it sort of the silver lining of something that was not very, you know, fun to deal with. But what we discovered was that everybody loved the two months time frame. It just gives, especially our shop hoppers, a lot more time um, to spend in the stores and get out and visit all of them. We had almost 100 people who finished and visited all 93 stores on the Shop Hop last year, which is a commitment. <laughs> you, you definitely uh, have to be an overachiever to do that, because I think there are a couple of groups who are very anal retentive, and they, they mapped it out and had it timed out and it had it all planned. And it's over 4,300 miles of driving to get to all of the stores across the state, which is great. Now, most of our shop hoppers will do two to three of our regions at a time. So they kind of break it off and bite it into pieces and then just come back every year and do a different region. But um, yeah, a lot of fun and, you know, a lot of reason to just go out and lots of prizes to win by visiting different stores and different regions. But again, just a great way to get out and get a taste of quilting and all that Iowa has to offer. Sure. All right, so we're gonna circle back to the idea of the Iowa Shop Hop a little bit more later, but let's pass things over to Heidi. And Heidi, tell us about yourself and Hen and Chicks and the, uh, the Nest and American Quilt Retailer and I don't know, whatever else it is that you do. 
All right. Well, thank you very much for asking me to be a part of uh, today. And, and uh, it's very exciting to just continue to promote quilting. I'm very lucky that I started quilting when I was nine and had a grandmother who taught me to quilt. So I grew up um, quilting and being creative, doing all those kinds of things. And one thing led to another, and I'll uh, keep the story short, but I have spent the majority of my 30 years um, plus of um, professional life in the quilting world, first as the editor of American Patchwork and Quilting Magazine for um, Better Homes and Gardens, then as the national sales manager for APQS Quilting Machines, now as the owner of Hen and Chick Studio in Conrad, Iowa, as well as the publisher and editor of American Quilt Retailer, um, which is a trade publication for quilt shop owners. So I, I wake up every day just blessed um, to be able to be thinking about creativity and quilting. Uh, our quilt shop, which is um, going to be celebrating 10 years uh, this fall, uh, is in Conrad, which if you're in Iowa and drew a line between Des Moines and Waterloo. We're halfway in the middle, uh, just to the north of Marshalltown um, would be another landmark for you. We're a small quilt shop, but we certainly have a diverse amount, uh, a variety of fabric uh, with um, notions and all the kinds of things that quilters love. We have a lot of store samples to inspire people. We do a lot of um, Facebook lives and um, have a lot of fun doing what we're doing. So there's a lot of ways to follow us um, all around the world, um, which is really exciting. We've got people um, that join us from Ireland and uh, recently we sent um, product to Slovakia. I had to look that up on the map where it was even at. Uh, so that is super um, exciting. We do have a fully equipped retreat center and uh, it, it is full today uh, with uh, quilters. Uh, we have a smaller group right now just because of COVID but quilters love to join in with others and to be able to um, make their items, but yet share in the friendship and fellowship of the other quilters. So we're really excited to always have that space um, being filled and that is available for rent 365 days a year. So we try to fill it as often as we possibly can. So it's kind of us in a nutshell and an and a American quilt retailer is, like I said, it's a trade publication. So uh, most people don't have a clue what that is. It's not found on the newsstand or anything like that. But other shop owners uh, find uh, our magazine to be helpful in helping them run their businesses. So Awesome. All right, Judy, let's have you go next um, and tell us about yourself and Ben Franklin and the what you offer to quilters in Winterset specifically, but across Iowa. Um, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Yep. There we go. There we go. Good morning. Um, I guess I'll start by saying that um, be in July, Dave and I will have owned the store for uh, 43 years, which hardly seems possible. And the couple that owned the store prior to our being here had it for 39 years. This is our hometown. We moved um, nine times before we came back here, had the opportunity. When we found out, and Dave happened to be at a meeting where he found out that Herb was kind of wanting to sell the store. He came home, said, what do you think? And it happened pretty fast. And so long story short, after 43 years, it was a wise decision. <laughs> um, we've seen lots and lots of changes through the years. Uh, in fact, I was just visiting with Dave about it this morning. Back when we took over the store, we immediately enlarged it from one business and made openings into another business. So we expanded it to twice the size that it, the original size was. So that helped right off the bat, helped us obtain space for a quilt area. At that time, quilting was not the in thing to do, just grandma did it. And um, the popular thing at that time was fake fur. And in our remodeling process, the fabric kept coming in sooner than I wanted. And I had, we had sheets of plastic all over the fabric and everything, trying to keep it clean. And, and today, nowadays, we have a largest selection of fleece 
So here we've come full circle in the soft cozy of the fake fur to the fleece being popular too. So we sell that aside from the quilting supplies. My love of quilting came from both of my grandmothers. And um, I had one grandmother who loved to have it all around her while she could just enjoy every little piece and little section. And she actually made me some little starter kits and had individual instructions on how to start and where to, what to put together. The other grandma, still a very talented quilter, she would at the end of the day have it all neat and tidy and put away in a closet. And if you came to visit her, you would never know that she was a quilter. So both ladies inspired me and I still have that inspiration today. And my desire is to help those people that are coming in at the store with questions and our visitors from out of town, along with um, the young people who are learning nowadays, they are, they're so eager, I think, more than ever to learn what grandma used to do. So we at the store level, we have offer so many services uh, besides helping people with their quilts. I mean, Dave um, repairs watches, um, we sell, we make keys, um, we have blinds, we, we fit those. Uh, there, I, the list is endless. So we are really a big full service type of store. And um, during the COVID was probably one of the hardest things we've ever done. Um, we stayed, we remained open. We knew those people needed their masks. We, they needed to have their fabric and be able to get to it and make them. So we had a window of four hours that we were open while um, still maintaining the supplies that came in the back door, the orders that still had to go out all the time. And um, it was a pretty stressful time, but thankfully we all got through it. And still, we can go to Ben Franklin and find the supplies we need to remake the masks that our children have lost, <laughs> in my case, <laughs> or that I myself have lost, if I'm really being honest. Um, thanks, Judy. I know that um, you've helped me, obviously, several times through projects or brainstormed, and um, I think that's one of the best things about um, having actual stores where you can talk to a person who has experience and has knowledge. Um, is it for, for newbies like myself? Um, we need mentors to help us through certain things. Um, and Judy has helped me with that several times and um, Tony and Joyce as well. So um, Tony or Joyce, um, whoever wants to go first, you guys can just fight for it. Whoever gets themselves unmuted first. I guess I'll go first. Um... I'm Tony Jacobson and I'm the manager of the quilt shop. Joyce is the owner of the quilt shop. Um, today I'm in our um, retreat center, which is a separate building from our shop. Um, as you can see, we've got lots of tables. Um, we've got natural light that comes in. Um, when we're fully operational, we can have up to 20 people um, working in our um, retreat center with each one having their own table. Um, unfortunately, we opened our retreat center February 1st of last year. So we really haven't been able to use it um, in the way that we had originally thought we would. Um, we have been able to have small, smaller groups um, so that um, they have space in the building that they can um, have, you know, we can be COVID safe for. But we're hoping that, you know, as things progress this year, we'll be able to get back to full um, things. Um, one of the things about being a quilt shop in Winterset is we're definitely a tourist um, destination. And so that entails a few different things than some of the other shops because we get people from all over and whether they're a quilter who's um, just coming through and not planning on shopping necessarily for quilts, but have to check out the local quilt shop or they're shopping for their quilting friends and don't know what to get them. Um, we've been able to come up with some items such as a, um, one of the local wineries here in um, north of town um, puts our label on their wine. And so we can sell the wine 
and it, our label says um, PeaceWorks Quilt Shop, where we um, quilt a little and wine or wine a little and quilt a lot. Um, another thing that people are coming for in, in Madison County is the bridges of Madison County. And so instead of just having um, generic um, covered bridge fabric, we um, have worked with a local photographer um, and licensed images that she's taken of the bridges. And so we've had those printed on 12 and a half and six and a half inch fabric squares so that people can actually take those with them and uh, make a quilt to um, celebrate the fact that they were here in Winterset and seeing the bridges. And so those are some of the things that as a, a quilt shop that's in a tourist destination, you kind of think about other ways that because they really want something that really tells them they were not only it's about quilting, but it's also about um, where they were at. So um, our shop has um, probably about 5,000 bolts. Um, we have um, about 170 wide backs at any given time. Um, we, so we see a lot of people coming in for the wide backs. Um, one of the things here at the um, retreat center, we put in a large sink um, because we like to dye fabric. So as you can tell by my shirt and, and Joyce's dress, um, we like to ice dye and do things like that. And so we wanted to be able to do that and let other people learn how to do that. And so um, we've got that kind of set up in our retreat center too. So um, Joyce, has, as I said, we, Joyce has been um, had a shop for 39 years. Um, she's been a Viking um, sewing machine dealer all those times, Husqvarna Viking. Um, and so that's another thing that um, you'll find in a lot of the shops is they'll be um, selling and, and hopefully servicing the machines there. We do service our machines in our shop so um, they don't get sent off somewhere else. Um, and I'm also a, uh, well, I was a graphic designer for 30 years before taking on this job. I learned to quilt when I was 10 from my grandmother. And, um, but with that graphic design background, I also design patterns. And so um, right now there are lots of patterns in our shop that are exclusive to our shop. Um, anytime a new line comes in, I'm always thinking about, okay, what's, you know, how can we um, use those? And so I'm either using one of our existing patterns I've come up with or um, coming up with a new pattern to work with. So those are things that you'll find. Um, so that's kind of the, our shop in a nutshell. All right, so Joyce, you're the last one to introduce yourself to us. Let's hear all about Joyce Franklin. I'm Joyce and I have owned a quilt shop for 39 years. I um, owned my previous one in Creston, Iowa for 34 years and I sold it so that I could retire. And then the development board from Winterset called and said, we're going to open the quilt museum and you know, who didn't want to be the shop next to the quilt museum? So I told them I was too old, but Tony called one night and said, if you'll open the store, I'll be your manager. So that's how we came into this partnership. I own it, he does all the work. It's a really great deal for me. I also started quilting with my grandmother. Um, I've been sewing for about 65 years. I didn't start by quilting. I started by making garments. Um, and so that's still a love. We have a, we have a cupboard that Tony has allowed us to have. Um, we call it the garment district. And so we do have some garments, fabrics there and patterns, which are great fun for, um, for me too. But it's, um, it's a delightful place to do business in winter set. The, the square is full and it's just fun. Thanks, Joyce. So I have to kind of interject here um, that my impetus for this particular program is kind of twofold. First of all, I want people who are not so familiar with Winterset and the Iowa Quilt Museum to know that in addition to the Iowa Quilt Museum, there are two wonderful quilt stops in uh, Winterset. So it's just this whole package deal if you're a quilter and you come to town. But our other goal as the Iowa Quilt Museum is to promote and elevate everything that is quilty in the state of Iowa. And a lot of that has to do with our really rich quilt shop culture. And I became aware of this, um, of how really rich the culture is in Iowa when I have a good friend who moved from Winterset to the Portland, Oregon area. And she said, Megan, you just don't know how good you have it there. 
there's fewer quilt shops around here. I have to drive, you know, all this way to get to one and they don't have as much fabric and it's just not the same. I didn't know how lucky I was when I was a quilter in Iowa. And as we were talking before the show started, Colleen mentioned a statistic that I've heard before and she swears she's read it somewhere. So I'm comfortable saying that, that Iowa has the most quilt shops per capita than, every, than any other state in the United States. Um, so my question to you all is, why do you think that is? What makes Iowa so special? Why are there so many quilt shops? And what is unique about kind of the Iowa quilt shop culture? So unmute yourself and um, comment on anything there. Nobody wants to jump on anybody else's toes. I, I will start. And I uh, obviously winter is a, is a big deal here. Uh, <laughs> we just lived through that. And that gives us some time to quilt. Um, probably too, um, because, because we um, have our close, a lot of us are close with our grandparents and that starts that, that ball rolling. Um, spending time you know with with um, a grandparent is special and especially if you can share uh, just share the quilting and and share that time together part of it too I think is the simple fact that um, the cost of overhead in some states is so expensive that it is it's not a um, a business where you're going to make huge amounts of money um, by selling just the fabric. And so I think that is a lot of it is you're, we're in a state that you can, your overhead can be much lower so that you can't afford to do this and um, enjoy your hobby and make a bit living out of it. But you still have to come up with other ways of making money than just the um, by the yard fabric. I would like to add that I think that um, we have a lot of entrepreneurs in Iowa. And I, I think our, our culture, our history here in the state of Iowa is, you know, I mean, all these people, farmers that are running their own businesses. And I think it's just part of the nature of our, of our landscape. And so I think there's um, good encouragement for people to start their own businesses. Mm -hmm. Those are all wonderful points. So let's talk a little bit more about, um, Tony mentioned, um, revenue streams beyond just by the yard fabric. Um, and you've all touched on that just a little bit. Um, obviously in Judy's case where their fabric store is part of the Ben Franklin, um, you know, the myriad other things that Ben Franklin offers. Um, I, I'm always fond of saying, if you can't find it in Ben Franklin winter set, you honestly don't need it. Um, that doesn't mean you don't, you know, want it, but you really don't need it. Um, so what are some of the other things that your stores that you do as entrepreneurs to kind of help with that, um, help keep your business solvent? I well, do. For, oops. Go ahead. Um, for us, you know, I, I, I teach a lot. Um, so we do a lot of classes that helps get, bring in new people into quilting too, because they're learning um, new things. Um, but you also have the social aspect. Um, the retreat center helps, as I said earlier, um, having sewing machines is a way a lot of the um, quilt shops help um, because it's a bigger price item. Um, so you don't have to sell as many to get the, the amount of money. Um, and, then, and then you have to do, as this last year has taught us, um, social media and doing things online. And so we have like an online store. Not everything that we have in our store is available online, but it gives us a presence that people know where we are they still know how to get to us. Um, anybody wants to call and um, check to see if we have fabric, we're more than happy to send it if we have it. Um, but right now, like we have our patterns and things like that that they can't get elsewhere um, on our shop. So it's different things like that that you, you come up with to help offset the costs. 
and I, I would absolutely uh, echo that, that, you know, on any given day, um, the weather in Iowa, depending on what time of year, um, can be a factor, different things that you have to have, as I like to say, multiple income streams so that I can, instead of having a, a you know, a year that looks like this, my year looks like this, because if one day the weather is bad, maybe our online business um, is picking up um, where the walk-in traffic in our brick and mortar is not. Um, we, in addition, also have a long-arm quilting machine that we rent. Um, so quilters can, can come in, take our certification class, learn how to rent it, and then finish their own quilts. So that's a very different um, um, form of, because that's a different group of people, if you want to say, than those who want to have professionals um, quilt their quilts. Um, and, and then again, we have the retreat center as well. So now I'm guessing, Joyce and Colleen, that the advent of the Iowa, all Iowa shop hop um, was in part to support quilt shops and help them reach other quilters and that whole, that revenue stream, find new customers, find different customers. So Joyce, why don't you tell us a little bit about how the shop hop started 10 years ago? Well, I had already been in business for many years. And as, as a store owner, you're always looking for the next best thing to keep you going. Um, so in the beginning, I remember that we would take a, just take a bus, one bus to some other shops or to a quilt show. And I used to laughingly call it Fabri, Fabraholics Anonymous bus ride around Iowa. And then we started doing the bus shop hops that went store to store to store and staying all night and, and visiting more shops. And I always say that I started the all Iowa shop hop because I wanted to see it happen before I died. And, and it did. Um, so far, I'm still here. Um, I hope I get a few more uh, good sewing years in too. But it was something that I just felt compassionate about sharing the um, sharing our stores because we want people to go to other stores too. It helps them see what we have, see what other people have. And everyone in Iowa is so nice that it's just a, it's, it's good to um, get people moving around the state and um, it has increased um, the, the quilting, um, the quilting community, I think. Well, and I might say that I think that's another interesting part about Iowa is that um, it's, there's a really strong sense of that rising tide floats all boats kind of thinking, as opposed to my quilt shop needs to compete with your quilt shop for customers, um, we know that quilters like fabric and they like different fabric and they like a lot of fabric. So just because I don't carry it doesn't mean, you know, I, Tony and Joyce, even though they carry a lot of fabric, they still can't carry everything. Um, and Heidi and Judy, the same thing. And so oh, I can go different places to look for different things. So 10 years have passed since the quilt shop or the, the all Iowa shop hop started. Colleen, what are some of the changes that have been made over the, the time frame there? Well, I think, you know, the, the all Iowa shop hop has evolved from, you know, the first year. And one of the, there are a lot of components that you might see in other shop hops around the country, you know, that range anywhere from four or five stores in a city to, you know, 12 to 15 stores in a region that put on a weekend shop hop or, um, you know, a, a week long or, you know, a, a shorter amount of time. One of the things that really sets us apart is the All Iowa Shop Hop magazine that we publish. And I think we've been publishing that since 2000. Thousand, oh gosh, now I'm not going to remember. Six or seven years. We have six or seven um, it, it issues, editions of that magazine available now. And that is a great tool. It helps the stores promote the shop hop, promote themselves, promote the industry. The magazine has all the information about each of the stores that is 
featured in each year's shop hop, but it also offers readers patterns, articles about the industry, advertising. It literally becomes for many of our shop hoppers, their statewide directory where I, I've heard from so many people say that they buy two copies of it, one to keep in their car and then one to keep in their sewing room. We also offer a lot of other fun parts of the shop hop that enhances and, and brings people in from not just the state of Iowa, but all over the country. I think last year, even uh, you know, amidst the pandemic, we had people from over 18 different states that visited and any typical year we'll have anywhere from 15 to 26 or 28 different states that people travel to Iowa to come on vacation to come on to the uh, shop hop. And we do, of course, fun things like a lot of shop hops where we offer prizes and incentives for the shop hoppers to come and visit and, and you know, maybe finish a region in the state. We also offer each year a unique fabric that can only be purchased at the stores that are on the shop hop and only available this year. So that's really fun. People come and they know that this is their one shot to get that fabric. Last year it sold out. This year it's it's been super popular so far. The stores can pre-sell it. You can't take possession of it until uh, June 1st. But I, so I think there are lots of different components. And I, I'm unique to this group in that I don't work in a quilt store. I don't own a quilt store. We really are a marketing company. And as a quilter myself, um, I've, I've sewn all my life, but I really got into quilting maybe three or four years ago. And I bought my machine for my like local store. And it, it, it was a store that offered a lot of different things. And I just was like, why would I go to another quilt store? It's all just fabric, right? Until I went on the first shop hop. And then I was like, oh my goodness, every store out there offers their own unique personality and specialties. And I just found myself getting even more excited about the art and the craft because I, re I mean, it made me realize that there's so much more out there and everybody on this call today has their own unique gift that they offer their sh their customers and that's what a shop hop does is it really opens the eyes to quilters who think well a store is a store <laughs> fabric is fabric until you really get out there and meet each of the stores and the staff and the owners and what they offer and i think that is that's what got me excited about getting involved with the shop hop and it's like planning a big party and I love doing it. And I love exposing people to this craft and art and all that Iowa has to offer. So. So Colleen, I'm going to pick up on something you said about kind of the fun um, incentives and prizes aspect of the shop hop. And we've already touched a little bit on um, the social aspect of quilting. So what are some of your favorite, um, and I hate to say gimmicks because that sounds so kind of cheap, but what are some of the favorite social or fun incentive type things that you've done in your shops, Tony, Joyce, Judy, and Heidi, that have kind of, um, that allow your customers to engage with each other and to engage with you? Give us some, some ideas of things you like to do. Well, we don't necessarily, you know, go for the for gimmicks and stuff but we do like to supply like each year i come up with a pattern that's specific to our shop that's using the shop hop fabric um so that they come to our shop to to get that pattern um and things like that but it's just you know just seeing the different things that people do with the shop hop fabric um, one of the things that i when i before i was a manager of a quilt shop and i did the the all iowa shop hop you start to think that okay you know what kind of shop quilt shop is going to be in a certain area and you've got a preconceived notion of okay they're going to carry this certain kind of fabric and when you give yourself the opportunity to check out these shops you find out no you may find exactly you know something that you didn't expect out in the middle of nowhere um, because it's the personality of the shop owners that are bringing the fabrics and that's you know their personality may not fit with everybody else in that area and so you may get a, a really interesting um kind of fabrics out of that because you've, you've given it a chance to see what is truly there. And so 
that's part of the fun of it is just really seeing um, the personality of each of the shops. And at PeaceWorks, you have some, um, I don't know if associations is quite the right, some collaborations, um, Quilt Rebels. You have a group that meets um, once a month and does art quilting. Tell us more about Quilt Rebels, Joyce, because I, I don't want to misrepresent. The um, Quilt Rebels group before COVID met in person once a month just to encourage each other to do art quilts. And we had have quite a good following on Facebook as well. So it's um, it's Quilt Rebels of Iowa. And still we are encouraging, though we're not meeting in person. We have, uh, we just finished um, what we called one Robin, which means you started with a quilt block that you made and you added to it. We drew a, a clue or, a, or an inspiration every month to add uh, something to that main quilt block. So we've finished that one. Now we're doing um, one Robin two, uh, because I hope we don't get to one Robin three or four or five, but that's that's been fun just to show each other how to do techniques. And um, it, it's, been, it's been great fun. Uh, that's one of the things that we've done uh, just within within uh, within our shop, and we've used our um, retreat center, our classroom, um, for those meetings. Someday we're going to have a quilt show with our one robins and uh, share that with the world too. And then there's a quilt of valor group that meets uh, at PeaceWorks um, on a semi regular basis as well. Yeah. Yes, I'll let Tony talk about the quilt of valor group. Yep. Um, yeah, they, and they've been able to, they've been a smaller group of them that have still continued to meet um, here in our retreat center throughout. Um, yeah, we've got a very active Quilt of Valor group. Um, I just finished my tenure on the Quilt of Valor uh, National Board as of the end of last year, um, but I'm still working on the newsletter for them. But yeah, they like to get together and um, work out um, lots of different um, quilts and they give over a hundred and some quilts each year um, to deserving veterans. So it's a, it's a really good um, organization and we've got a very active group that, that works on those quilts. Hi Dana, you've got quite a bit of stuff that you do on social media. What kinds of things do you use to engage your customers? Well, we have a, a Facebook group um, called the Creative Community and we are actually playing right now our third round of bingo. Uh, so we do a lot of um, different kinds of interaction uh, with, with our customers uh, to get them in, engaged in, in what we're doing. And we also do a monthly stash buster um, program, which has been amazing to see what people do with their stash and, um, you know, see the quilts they make. So, um, you know, and we Put the, what they make up on our website so that they can come back and see their own projects um, on, on there. So there's just a couple things. I'd like to lift up our local quilt guild. I, not every community is fortunate to have that, but we have a very strong guild and a good 25 to 30 ladies are present at each of the meetings prior to COVID, but we've sort of gradually started meeting again. And the, the main focus that this group has is charity baby quilts for the neonatal intensive care units at, our, at the hospitals in Des Moines. But if there's a local need, we see to that also. And I think um, the, the ladies need to be um, lifted up in all of their efforts to um, reach out to those in need. And I personally have helped and seen so many lap robes, lap quilts, uh, baby quilts, whatever, made this year to reach out to the people less fortunate and talk about making you feel good. 
So let's stay on the feel good story vein. Um, can you think of your favorite, and this is really putting you on the spot, I know. Can you think of a favorite story of a customer or a, a group or a, I don't know, something that you've encountered as a quilt shop owner um, that's just maybe your favorite feel good story? I should have prepared you for this. I'm going to jump in and just tell something that what we saw yesterday. I think every day we see those feel good stories because what 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 we get to see as shop owners is our customers that are wanting to make quilts for their family and they're looking for fabrics and they're looking for patterns that are specific for a child or a grandchild or maybe even it's a grandchild that's not, you know, not here yet. So I think every every opportunity we have to interact with our customers. I, I, you know, as I probably speak for the others too. I think that I mean, we have so many, but yesterday saw something I've never seen before. And we actually did a video on it. Um, a, a woman is basically got her family tree in the form of a crossword puzzle. And every time somebody adds a new baby to the family, she goes in and adds the name in the crossword puzzle. And we were joking because like, you know, at some point, do you not have to just like name based on how it's going to fit in the, you know, in the letters, but it was an amazing tribute to her family. And she even had it color coded of a certain colors were certain um, generations and, you know, and the children and the grandchildren. And it was, you know, it was something like that that I've never seen before. Um, the creativity that comes out of our customers and, you know, what inspires them, I, I think is wonderful. And those are just those little moments um, every day are ones that are memorable for me. So Heidi, is she appliquing this the squares on? Yes, yeah, she's appliquing. At some point she pieced at some point she pieced them in, but then it was quilted bound. It's a finished quilt. So now she has to go back and applique uh, any of the new letters um, on. So it's really, it was really fun. That's amazing. One of, one of the things that's kind of fun to see um, as Judy was talking about the quilt that was behind her um, is that seeing people that are, have gone and gotten old fabric or old uh, blocks that have just been left for years and years, I'm not finished. And they're putting them together and coming into the shop and, tr and trying to get the fabric to finish those up. And so it's really nice to see that um, the new quilters understand the value of all that work that put it, was put into those. And, you know, you know as, as a new quilter, you're kind of going, well, how can you put in that much work and not finish it? Um, so it's, it's nice to see people are finishing those um, old blocks and doing something with some of that um, that they find along the way. I have a funny story and I usually share this when I go out speaking to guilds around the country. It, it's just humorous, I think. So a lady came in and she spent $110.14. And she wrote her check for one husband, $10.14. So you know what she was thinking. And so a few months later, she came back to the store and, and she got to the front door and she held up her billfold and she said, I brought cash this time. <laughs> because then it's, there's no record, right? That's true, yes. I've heard that multiple times. You know, if I pay cash, there's no record. And he doesn't know how much I spent. Um, <laughs> We have a, a board member who makes some uh, greeting cards for us in our gift shop. And one of them is, you know, about just give me the credit card and don't ask any questions, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then there's a man kind of solitary in a boat in the middle of the lake. All I said to her was, do you really need more fabric, honey? You know, that kind of thing. It's, it's kind of a ubiquitous um, line of humor there with the, with the spending on fabric. Um, so if somebody is watching our program today and um, is not from the state of Iowa, I'm thinking that certainly after all of this lovely conversation, they're definitely going to want to make a trip to Iowa and um, visit quilt shops between 
two and 92 of them, depending on how long they want to stay in our great state. Um, but what else do you think, you know, kind of with some closing words, because we're within 10 minutes of trying to wrap up, what are some closing words of kind of what makes the Iowa quilt shop culture special or unique or worth visiting Iowa for? Well, I think part of it is just the fact that there are so many locations. You can take a trip and um, you can tie it into so many other interests that you have. Um, you know, like here in Winterset with the bridges, we've got the John Wayne Museum, um, all these different things. It's like, okay, if, if your um, people that are with you don't want to go quilting, there's other things in Iowa to do. Um, and you can find a quilt shop near almost any of the, the um, tourist attractions in Iowa. So um, that's always a good thing is that you can kind of do that side trip while other people are, inter are doing something else that they're interested in. That's a really yeah, we talk, we sorry. talk, oh, sorry about that. Sorry, <laughs> I was just gonna say, we talk about that a lot on the shop hop and that like, I think one of the great things about Iowa is that we still have, we still have those small town downtown areas where you know, there's an antique store or hardware store and the, the little mom and pop diners. And I hear so many stories from shop hoppers who bring a friend or a spouse or a family member who, while they're shop hopping at the quilt store, that other family member is wandering the streets of town and visiting the other parts of it. And I know that there are lots of other states and cities across the country that offer that, but really like, it's, it's crazy amazing what we have in Iowa and the hospitality that we offer. Colleen, while we've got you, will you please tell people how they can get a copy of the Iowa Shop Hop magazine? <laughs> you know, you can, I just, I just posted um, in the chat that it's at the printers right now. So it should be um, out soon and then we'll be delivering it to the stores um, as soon as it gets to us and during the month of April, usually it hits about mid-April. Um, and if, if the viewers aren't already part of our followers either on Facebook or the All Iowa Shop Hop, as soon as that is in stores, the stores will be sending notices out, but we will say, okay, it's time to go grab your magazine. And then you can reach out to any of our stores across the state and they, many of them will ship it to you if you're out of state. If you don't, if you're not familiar or you don't have a favorite store or a local store, you can go to our website. We have a list of all the stores participating and right from that page, you can click and it will take you to their website or Facebook page. So then, you know, you can just randomly go out and pick one or if you, you, if you know of one, you can, get to them and they'll help you get a magazine. So should be out soon. We're super excited about it. So it's really a shop local kind of thing. You need to, to get your magazine directly from a local shop. Yep. Um, you don't order it from the Isle Iowa shop hop entity itself. Right. Um, Our so magazine is what helps fund the program, to be honest. Like, so the stores sell the magazine, they keep the proceeds of it to help fund all the fun things that we offer. So we want you to go to the store to get your, get two copies, <laughs> one for your directory to keep in your car and one to um, use in your sewing room and um, use it year round, so. Excellent. All right, so what else do um, potential shoppers need to know about why they should come to Winterset this is your 30 second commercial for why you should come to, not Winterset, come to Iowa, well, and Winterset um, for a quilting, quilting vacation. I, I, everything that you've heard today, if you love the art and if you can't come to Iowa, we want you to come to Iowa, but you know, pick up a local shop hop and go out there and experience everything that you can and open your eyes to all that every single store has to offer. Judy, Joyce, Heidi, what do you think? Judy, you're on mute still. Just quickly, just, just for, uh, for Dave and I to get away and kind of regroup our therapy during this COVID time has been to take 
an afternoon and travel to a town fairly close within an hour's distance. We take our, our cooler full of our water and our brown baguette and we go pick a town and we drive around, look at the sites. We, we park in a residential area, not downtown, but in a residential area. And we go for a walk in that residential area and you get a feel for the town. Then we go, we go uptown, we walk around the town and then we find a park to eat our lunch. And, and it is amazing. You may be gone for two or three hours, but by the time you get home, you are so proud of where you come from, but you're also in awe of what other towns have to offer. And it has been a real, real eye opener for us to spend that quality time. And it has been, um, it just makes you feel good. I would add that you're gonna, you're gonna meet people that are interesting and, and wonderful to know, great, very creative. And you're just gonna, um, you know, have a great experience, not only in the shops, in the communities, but with the people. I think, uh, I think somebody already said uh, people in Iowa are nice. <laughs> Joyce? So true. And we like to take our granddaughters. We have a lot of them. So we take them on little short trips around Iowa. Um, just again, grandpa packs the sandwiches and, and mm -hmm. that's, that's how we do it. But they love seeing other other places just, mm -hmm. just around Iowa and it, it, Iowa's a beautiful state anyway. It is, there is a lot of beauty in Iowa um, in a lot of ways, beautiful places, beautiful scenery um, and really, really beautiful people. Um, and as evidenced here, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of beautiful fabric. Um, I came to this world of quilting, um, not as a quilter. You all talked about how young you were. I learned to quilt when I was 33. Um, that was three <laughs> years ago. Um, and I started the job here as the director of the Iowa Quilt Museum, and I knew nothing about quilting. Um, but Tony was on our board, and um, Judy was a big supporter of the museum. And so I would go in, and I would see this fabric. And I just was like falling in love with all of this beautiful fabric. And that is how I finally became a quilter because I just, I was, I was just enamored with the beauty of the fabric and the colors and the patterns. And um, it was just a wonderful thing. So um, go ahead, um, everybody who's a guest today, if you would just start dropping your stuff into the chat window um, of how people can connect with you, your website, um, your Instagram and Facebook handles, um, how you want people to find you and connect with you. Terry um, has also shared with us, um, Travel Iowa is the name of the um, Iowa Travel, <clears throat> Iowa Department of, of Travel. That's how you can find some information about other sites in Iowa. Um, there's also the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs um, and they have some interesting information. They have an, an app you can download that directs you to cultural sites around the state. Um, and so it's really a wonderful place to visit. The Iowa Quilt Museum, of course, is happy to be, uh, to welcome you as a visitor. But we really just want to serve the entire community of quilters in the state of Iowa and lift all of that up um, and help people find things that make them happy fabric that makes them happy, the quilts that make them happy to make them comforted. Um, so I wanna thank Tony and Joyce, Judy, Heidi and Colleen for being our guests today. I wanna thank all of you for tuning in to our virtual Iowa Quiltscape program um, and invite you to come back next week on the 30th of March, our guest will be Pam Weeks and she will be starting us on a two part um, walk through the gallery here. Um, we actually have more quilts in the gallery than we typically do. There are 25 hanging in the gallery, three in display cases and one on the bed. So there's a total of 29 quilts in this exhibit and they are all fantastic. 
They're really marvelous quilts and Pam has done a fantastic job of putting the exhibit together. We will be offering a virtual exhibit again or a virtual gallery tour for those who are still not able to come to Iowa and take a look in person. And then we also will be putting together an exhibit catalog. Um, and if you know somebody who is interested in this program but wasn't able to tune in today, um, we do post videos of each program online um, af shortly after the program is finished. So you can find that on our website, which is iowaquiltmuseum.org. And Terry has just put it into the chat window. Thank you for being so on the spot, Terry. Um, and you can also find that on our YouTube channel if you just go to YouTube and search for the Iowa Quilt Museum. Okay, last chance. Anybody want to say anything else to our guests this afternoon before we close up? All right, then. Well, we will bid you adieu, everyone, and hope that we see you at either PeaceWorks Quilt Shop or Hen and Chicks Studio or Ben Franklin or one of the other fabulous quilt shops. Colleen, how many quilt shops are participating in the Shop Hop in 2021? I think we have 84 total. 84. So there's lots to see. Yes, yes. So wonderful opportunities for quilting this summer. And the exhibit that I just mentioned will be on, uh, will be up through July 6th. And if you want to wait right until the end um, of the exhibit, but the beginning of the shop hop come the first weekend in June for the um, airing of the quilts, the Madison County airing of the quilts, which is our community wide festival quilts hanging in um, dozens of locations around our community. Um, that's a great weekend to come check things out. So, all right. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely afternoon. Thank you again to my guests for being here. We appreciate everyone's support of quilting and of the Iowa Quilt Museum, and we hope you have a lovely afternoon. <laughs>